Hey YouTube friends and family, how's everybody doing? Been a while. I haven't done a video for a long time. I don't know why except that I've been awful busy. Garden flourished this year, so I was canning like crazy. Things going on in my family. Eight floods in one house, if you can imagine. Nothing compared to Louisiana by any means, and other places, but pipes breaking, old house, trees falling in the yard, trees dying, busy, busy, many problems, but all of them just a another challenge in life. I look at the news and I watch what's going on in YouTube, the little bit that I've been on, and I'm shocked, absolutely shocked, that we, humanity, I mean, we're not allowed to say mankind anymore, we're not allowed to say woman or man, but we can say people or humanity. It bothers me that we are all no better off than we were so long ago. So long ago. I watch. I've done videos. I've tried to share with everyone what I know to be true. Does that mean I'm right all the time? No. But it's my truth. It's what I know to be true. And in that, I share that we're all failing. We are all getting a big F on our report card. All of us. Every single one of us. My dad would say, girl, you're missing the boat. And that's what it is. You see, the only thing that matters and for people of any religion, it's real simple. First Corinthians 13, 13, I think it is. If I remember right, I might be wrong on that, but I know it's 1 Corinthians. The only thing that matters is love. In Acts, you can go to Acts and it talks about us all, all of us. It doesn't say that race or that race. It says all of us are of one blood. One blood. Doesn't say one flesh, one tone, one shade. I did a video before I gave up doing videos. And I tried to explain. And I get choked up when I feel this. But I tried to explain to everybody there absolutely is no, no black human being, nor is there a white human being. There are none. Never in my 63 years have I seen one black or one white. Even a young man that I saw burn up in a house came out gray. Two children that I saw burn up in a car weren't black. This problem started years ago, but it's been fed. It's been fed for years and years and years. I implore you to listen. In 1601, 
the year 1601, there was a business, great flourishing business, the transatlantic slave trade. Google it. Very real. You'll find the database. 12.2 beautiful 12.2 million 12.2 million beautiful human beings were taken from their homes in Africa. They were taken from their families, their villages, taken from their way of life, and they were thrown into a life so foreign to them, so cruel, that the memories and stories and songs have been shared from generation to generation. Over and over, the stories were told for one generation. It was probably the worst, and that was the first generation. After a while, slavery became their way of life. They didn't know any better. They would hear the stories, but having never witnessed it, never lived it, they couldn't even fathom the villages in Africa, the animals working together in unity. All in stories, the young children that were born to slaves, some of them from their masters and slaves, they got together, master and slave, which made the child half-breed, kind of like me, half-breed, Those children didn't know what it was like. They would hear the stories, and they'd use their imagination, paint their own pictures in their minds. But it wasn't real. It was all the memories and stories and songs from years that were gone, homes that were no longer, families that were never together again, all because of the transatlantic slave trade. In 1866, the transatlantic slave trade ended. It sure did. But the problem, the scars, were no longer physical scars that people saw. After it ended, I mean, there were no new scars. And yet, the mental scars lived on and on and on 415 years ago that happened 150 years ago it ended 150 years ago but still I mean we can say that the slave trade ended 150 years ago but did it? Did it really? Has it? Has it ended? It seems that Charlotte, North Carolina is living proof that it lives on. And where I'm using the Charlotte, North Carolina as an example, but there's many, many events that have taken place, the rioting, the protesting, the, the killings, that have taken place because the problem, this slavery, which is now mental, not physical, it's mental, is living on. There's going to be a lot of people that say, hey, you know, you're not, you're not black. You don't know. Well, you're right. And you're not black either. Nobody's black. Nobody's white. 
And anybody paying attention knows that what I'm saying is true. It's all mental scars now. Sad thing about a mental scar is when we believe it, we live it. You speak it, you become it. But you're not doing it alone. I mean, we can say why. Why is it living a long time? Why is it still alive and well? Why the animosity? Why the hate? Why the bitterness, the name-calling, the killing? Why? Why the long life of division? Blacks versus white. As I said, I've never in my life ever seen either a black human nor a white human. I do see many shades of human. Many shades. In fact, one scene on the news during one or, or YouTube video, I forget which, during one of the many brutal riots titled Protest, I did see a dark-shaded male human. I know that's not politically correct. A uh, male human. But I saw a uh, dark-shaded male human fall to the ground right next to a lighter-shaded human that was male also. Both lying there on the cold asphalt in a growing pool of blood. The lighter shade man, the darker shade man, both humans laying together in a growing pool of blood. Red blood. Very red. In fact, the street light shining off of it. I couldn't tell which male human the blood came from, or was spewing from, or was it spewing from both? I couldn't tell. That scene in my mind still bothers me. Which man was hurt? I'll never know. They both had red blood. The life of the slave brutality is deliberately being kept alive. People, please. It is deliberately being kept alive. I've listened to it for years. I remember the 60s. I watched it happen. Kent State. I saw it all. Frightening. Horrifying. all being kept alive. It's used successfully every day in America. The division of black and white. It's being kept alive. Absolutely. Democrats know that. Not the people. Not we the people. Not the people that vote Democratic or, or think they belong to the Democratic Party. No. The establishment, the administration, the government, the side that is Democratic. See, Lincoln was Republican. He believed in freedom. For the people. He didn't believe in slavery. He ended it. Now there may have been another side to that story. I mean I've heard it. But it was supposed to be abolished. Sad. Sad that humans of multicolors humans of multicolors in in our country, or in the world, more so in America. It's sad that the multicolored shaded people, all shades of people, 
in America have not grown past the truth that the cruelty of the slavery so long ago is in fact being fed to any dark shaded person today along with the light shaded humans so dark shaded humans light shaded humans doesn't matter which one we are all being fed this garbage for division why do you think there's a Republican Party and a Democratic Party parties that are divided think about it the Democratic Party has kept all of us slaves all of us sadly though the darker shaded humans because of their ancestry because of their stories the hand-me-down pains and sorrows the songs the mental scars have been fed for breakfast lunch and dinner fed as bedtime stories being fed even yet today and what we don't understand is that we are allowing 455 years ago or 415 years ago pardon me and 150 years ago we're allowing that to rule us today, to control us. Not so much it. I mean the stories. Not the stories. But the revenge. The revenge that so many feel for their ancestors. We're being prompted never to forget never to forgive never but we have to remember that very man 150 years ago that fought so hard to abolish slavery Abraham Lincoln also said a house divided against itself cannot stand a house divided against itself cannot stand. We have to get past the black and white. There's nothing that simple. It is not black and white. It is multicolored. Humans are every shade you can imagine. The controllers, you don't believe there's controllers? You don't believe that the lighter shaded people are being controlled just as much as the darker shaded people? On ABC, an interview, and I can't remember the guy that was interviewing him, but he was interviewing Obama. And during the interview on ABC, Obama said, even most eight-year-olds would tell you that the whole slavery thing wasn't very good for black people. Jim Crow wasn't good for black people. What we have to do is use our history to propel us to make more progress in the future. Let me repeat that quote. Even most eight-year-olds would tell you that the whole slavery thing wasn't very good for black people. Jim Crow wasn't good for black people. What we have to do is use our history to propel us 
to make more progress in the future. End quote. Wow. 2016, my friends, my family. All shades. All shades of friends and family, brothers and sisters. If that isn't control, I don't know what is. Is that not a prompt? That every eight-year-old should know that black people suffer. He, and he says black people. Silly man doesn't even realize there are no black people. Many shades of people. What we have to do is use our history. See, that's part of the problem in North Carolina right now and many other cities around our United States or around America or whatever we're allowed to call it our country. The problem there is that the history, the history, the history, the stories, the songs, the memories, memories that are not ours. They're memories that have been handed down generation after generation after generation after generation. And people can't get past it. The problem, the problem is so real. And yet if we would come together and realize that there is no black and white to this. There are humans, and we are of one blood. And for all you lighter folks, for all you humans that are lighter shade, you might want to have your genomes tested. Go and have one of those DNA ancestry roundups where you get the little pie and it says you're a bit of this and a bit of that. You're going to find out that you probably have a bit of that African blood. Many do. Many, many. We're not just multicolored. We have multi-races within it, all of us. And that goes for the darker shaded people. Yeah, unless you come straight from Africa... If you've been here and your mom and dad were here and your grandma and grandpa were here and, and their mom and dad and their grandmas and grandpas and you go back generations, you know, go back at least 150 years and go back further, go 415 years when that trade ended. You're going to find out that a lot of hanky-panky back behind the shed. You know, I love y'all. I love every doggone one of you. Give it some thought. Think about it. They want us divided. They want us to have problems. They do not want the darker race to be happy. They don't want the darker people to flourish, to have good homes and, and good jobs and uh, to be equal. We need to be equal, all of us. We need to come together, work together for the better, uh, betterment of all. And trust me, I'm as poor as people can get. Margaret did a video on how poor she is, the food stamps and all the problems. Boy, people come down on her. You know, we're put in this position, every one of us. We're put in this position. Every one of us. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Love one another. Because... All that matters is love. Go out and buy yourself a bunch of colored eggs. Every color you can think of. And be sure and get brown ones. Crack them all in a bowl. Lay the shells on the sides. On the counter. 
try and match the egg yolks with the colored shells. On the outside, we might be different shades. On the inside, like the two men laying on the asphalt, our blood's red. One blood. Great big hugs and a whole bunch of love, guys. Catch you later.